Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at some paints that are pretty new to the American market. They have been available in China and I think probably other Eastern countries for a while, but these are the Paul Rubens tube paints. And on Amazon, they have had the right, the uh, floral set, which is what I'm going to review today, and also the standard set, which would be what would have come in the pan in the box like this of your standard colors. I did swap some things around. I thought this pretty pink tin would be great to put my floral colors in. Also because I was really running low on my watercolor pans. I had an assortment of full and half pans. I put the colors I would most likely use the most in the full pans and the others in the half pans. And I um, just put them in this, the old Paul Rubens tin. I used poster uh, putty down the center to hold these additional pans in. But I've got 24 in here and this is my little custom swatch I made for that. I just want to make sure you didn't get confused when I'm grabbing this pan because uh, this tin, this tin does not come with a floral set. I took the paints, the uh, other pan, Paul Rubens paints that I've had for quite a while and I put them in this meat and tin. It, they, the pans that came in this box do not fit in the tin with the rails. I just have to have to leave the rails out. And then I threw some Primatech paints down the center because they actually work really well with the Paul Rubens set. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because I know you're probably used to the old style Paul Rubens pans in this set. But I swapped some things around. Uh, and that's kind of fun. I don't know. Do you like doing that? Like mixing and matching and moving stuff around? So anyway, um, the Paul Rubens tubes have been a Available for a while in China, probably for as long as the pans have. They're just have now been imported. And I just wanted to show you what you have here. Now the thing, the first thing I noticed with these tubes, before I even put them on the pan, looking at the pigment information on them, was that all in the, there's 24 colors here, um, 19 of them are single pigment colors. So I was very excited about that because um, generally when you're looking at paint that's not as expensive as other brands, this at the time that I'm recording this review, this set was $56 and um, they sold out really quick. So I don't know if the, they're gonna um, alter that price. I know the set of 24 of the standard colors that you, like if you want to refill your original Paul Rubens set, like the pan set with two paints, that set is um, was 60 something, I think. Now prices obviously on Amazon are, sub are subject to change, but um, just to kind of give you an apples to apples. And I could see why you might want to buy the tubes and spend a little bit more because you could refill your half pans probably about four or five times from a 12 milliliter tube. They say you can get a couple refills out of a five milliliter and this is 12, uh, this is 20, no, this is 12 milliliters. So yeah, I would say you'd probably get, I only really think you have about one to two half pans in a five milliliter tube once you've like let it dry it out and stuff. So I would, you definitely could get, um, I would say easily four or five refills of a half pan from one of these tubes. Um, but anyways, all but five colors were single pigments, which were, was very exciting. I did write the pigment numbers down here for, oops, I forgot to write that one down apparently. This one is PV23. That's one of the mixes. Um, I'm trying to see what else was a mix. The That green was a mix. That olivey color was a mix. Um, what else was a mix? I think I got them all. The indigo was a mix. But other than that, uh, they were all single pigments. So here you can see the colors. I think I might have forgotten to put one of the greens down. I'll have to, you can count them up. You can pause and count them up. I'm not going to count <laughs> in real time. Um, but yeah, they their colors are great. They're the, the tried two colors. Actually, the thing I liked about indigo which I'm like, wow, that looks like Prussian blue to me. But Prussian blue, as you know, is a fugitive color. So I'm like, well, what did they use to make indigo? And they used PB15, which is your, um, you know, your tried and true uh, phthalo blue. And they used carbon black. And neither of those, oh, they also used um, PV19, which would be that color right there. And that's how they made the indigo. And it looks just like Prussian blue, but these colors are light fast that they used in that. So that might be something that you might want to look at if you love Prussian blue, but you're a little worried about the fugitiveness of it. I sometimes use indithrone blue, which is PB60, because it's a single pigment color, but it's also kind of a 
dead color. Like, it looks a little dull, and I don't find the indigo to look that dull. It's uh, it's definitely brighter than a Payne's Gray, but if you took that and mixed it with a little bit of the um, the burn brown there, I think you'd have a nice Payne's Gray color. The browns are all made from PBR7. Um, I find the Van Dyke looks like your tried and true burnt sienna, and the uh, burned brown, when you have it a little bit thicker, I did glazes. Well, for some reason, I didn't put a glaze on that one. I don't know why. <laughs> I was having some problems, apparently. Um, here you can see the glaze on that one. It does give you more of a burnt umber to sepia colorway. Uh, the colors glazed really well. I didn't have any issues with lifting. Um, uh, colors are very transparent. You can see I did do a, a line with a permanent black marker, made sure it was dry, and then I painted over it. Didn't have any um, transparency issue except for that lilac color which is right here lavender violet which is a very opaque color it's probably more useful in uh, brush style floral art because you have those more delicate colors and um, I know in like Chinese brush painting and Sumi E art they do tend to use more pastels and also I think because they're on that rice paper those thicker paints tend to feather less um, and they wouldn't probably want to water down a violet like that with enough water to make it that pastel because it would bleed so much um, and potentially damage a paper so that could be why that color is included but other than that all the other colors are very western feeling as far as how they glaze and the intensity of color so um, there's the swatches very, I actually think the colors are more luminous than the pan Paul Rubens original colors. It could just be the color selection. There's a few colors that overlap. I'll grab that palette, that uh, swatch too, so you can compare. So this is your regular Paul Rubens set. Like I love the. Like, if you look at that warm red there versus that red, this is so much more clean. Um, you know, I just find that the floral set's a little cleaner. But then you've got the ultramarine blue, which is going to be about the same. Um, their violet, the violet I had, I think it had some sludge on it. I think I actually need to clean off that pan and see if there's anything underneath. Somebody told me they had that same issue where the top of the violet was very, like, just dark brown, and then underneath it, it was good. But um, I found that the just the floral colors were so much cleaner. So there isn't a lot of duplicate. If you already have the standard Paul Rubens set of 24 and you want to try tubes, I would encourage you to get the floral set versus just buying the same set again in tubes that way you can kind of have a variety i think you still have a good um a good range the browns might be a little bit nicer in the original one um and you do have like a uh looks like you do have a prussian blue there and you do have more blues for like landscapes and stuff but you've got you've got quite a few blues there well it's up to you but there you go you can see you're not going to get a lot of duplication between those two sets their burnt sienna is clearly that more um, reddish burnt sienna and they've got like kind of an English red if you want something even earthier but redder a uh, redder, redder earthy color their yellow ochre there looks more like your tried and true yellow ochre whereas the yellow ochre here looks more like a raw sienna it is uh, I believe that's PY42 just like your what you'd expect for yellow ochre that one I'm not sure if that's PY42 or not um, I think it is, but it is a little hazier. It's a little more opaque. I find that the standard Paul Rubens have a little bit more body to them, a little more opacity than the floral colors. So just to kind of give you that subtle differences, but you know, if you've used the pans of Paul Ruben, you know, I think it's important to know the differences. Um, so I'll show you a couple paintings that I did with these. I'm just so impressed that they're, that 19 of these colors are single pigment. I think that's just fantastic, especially for, you know, it's artist quality, but it's a budget artist quality paint. So this was done with a floral set. I did add some white gouache to the highlights there. Uh, it was a very intuitive painting, but I mean, I just love that cobalt teal. I love the colors that, that are supposed to granulate do, the colors that aren't supposed to granulate don't. Um, I was really, I found it very easy to work with. Um, definitely, if you like painting flowers, if you like doing summery things, definitely wonderful. I did a seascape with the um, with the paints, and they layer. I have a lot of layers in here in the water, and I had really good results with it. I like to have luminous. I love painting rocks, and especially the rocky shoreline of Maine. This was out at Scudic Point. I found the colors mixed really cleanly. I have a couple blues in the sky. Um, the colors glazed really well. I got a nice depth of color in the water that I wanted, so I have no qualms with that at all. And then this was a wet into wet painting I did. Oh, by the way, this here was done on the Paul Rubens hot press block. I really like their hot press blocks, 100% cotton. Their cold press is nice too. I find the hot press though makes your colors feel or look a lot more vibrant. I wonder if I still have the painting on I've got one of their cold press blocks right over here. All right, so this is their cold press block, and uh, you can see the texture to it. It's got a little more texture to it. Uh, obviously, I don't have the painting on there anymore. I've removed it, but um, 
but they sell both of those on Amazon for us here in America. Or if you are overseas, if you're in Europe, if you're in Asia, you may have more options to buy this paint. And I know the tubes are, are sold open stock over there and probably the half pans as well. So, you know, do what's best for you. Get, you know, purchase it from the place that makes the most sense for you. And this was a wet and to wet where I wet the back and then I wet the front and then we did the painting. Um, and it worked really well for that technique. The glazing worked really well. Lifting was really good on the leaves. Um, you know, colors that were supposed to lift, lifted. The earth tones, the um, uh, single pigment green is a nice one for lifting. They just were very easy to use and, and performed really well. So if you're looking for a range of colors like this, you want to buy a set so you can save some money and you want uh, mostly single pigment colors, you really can't go wrong with this. And even if you weren't necessarily a flower painter, I mean, some of these colors are just super handy. That PR54, that's a pyrrole red. That's just a gorgeous color for mixing. It's um, it's a warm color, but it's not really opaque. And a lot of times when you have warm based colors, see, if you look at these colors, see how cool they are. They're, you know, they're technically a, a shade of red, but they're cooler leaning. They lean more towards blue. The, the, trans, the cool colors are generally quite transparent, but your warmer colors, the colors that lean more towards a, their warmer neighbor, those tend to be opaque, but they're very transparent here. Your yellows are really transparent and yellows are a color that generally will go more opaque, um, which is weird because you think, well, they're not that strong. You don't think, you th a lot of people think of tinting strength and opacity is the same, but they're not. A lot of times yellow, they have low tinting strength but, and they're also tend to be opaque. A cadmium yellow is opaque. Um, a lot of yellows are, and these yellows are very transparent. You've got a gorgeous, really warm one. You've got your tried and true PY3, which is, uh, I think they call it permanent lemon. It would be like Hansa yellow. Um, they've got the PY150, which is gorgeous for making luminous greens. They're, I just, I really feel they cover a lot of your bases here. You may prefer other earth tones. Um, earth tones are a tricky thing. Some companies do an excellent job with earth tones. Others, they're a little bit more subtle, more weak, like Winsor & Newton's earth tones are quite weak. Um, I, don't, I, I think the Paul Rubens are a little on the weak side, but they're not, I mean, they're not bad. Uh... My favorite earth tones, I would say, would be, I like Rembrandt's earth tones, I like um, Da Vinci's earth tones, I like M. Graham's earth tones. So, you know, and that's something that you might want to do along the way. You pick you pick and choose from different brands that give you what you like. I love the Ultramarine here. Um, everything's very transparent. The Cobalt is what you'd expect. I feel like everything is, is what you'd expect, and the colors here, with the exception of that lavender, are very transparent. So, um... Yeah, I, I really have no complaints. If you want a more a better variety of greens, take your PG-36, mix your different yellows with it, mix an orange with it, see what you get. Um, mix some you yellow ochre with it. They have a different name for it. That's the thing, I'm going by common names and not what they have on their tubes because my audience is mostly American. So that would be like, if you were going to the store, what you were shopping for, what you would recognize a color being called by their pigment number, that's what I'm going, I'm using a common name here. So you may find that some of the colors sound different and don't go by the the um, the indexes on the tubes because they're gonna be off. Make your own swatch. What I did, and I'll just show you this because I think it's pretty important, um, because as you go along, you know, you'll use up paints and then you'll have empty tins and you don't wanna just throw those tins away and then buy another empty palette to put your paint into. You recycle, you clean out your old half pans, you refill them, you reuse tins. So, and then you might decide, well, geez, I love ultramarine blue and I want a full pan of ultramarine blue in my set because I don't like to try to cram my big brush in a tiny little pan. So, you know, you're gonna, figure out what works best for you. Um, so when I made my swatch for my original Paul Rubens here, I, of course they came in there and they were two rows of 12 and that's how I swatched them out. So that's why when I moved them to this palette, I made sure to put them in the same order that my swatch was and I made an additional swatch for the middle row. So when you swatch your colors, if I was gonna swatch it again, I would make a three row swatch. I would draw the size pans, like a full pan bigger than a half pan and that's how I would fill it in. And that's what I did here. I just draw, drew um, three rows and my full pans I made wider, my half pans I made skinnier so I would know what was what at a quick glance because this is a lot of colors to have in one palette. I think it can be quite confusing uh, to see where you are, but the colors are all unique enough that you know, quick glance at my at my swatch, I can see what I have. Because what happens is when you have really transparent colors, they're de deceiving in the pans. In the pans, they will look way darker than they are. Um, Yellows show up really well because usually yellows are a little bit more opaque, but as you can see here, they are very transparent. And um, 
And yeah, that's so I make my I make my swatch so that it correlates with what I have. Like if you look at that, that looks like baby poo, uh, like brown, but it's actually a super vibrant, transparent yellow. So you, you know, it's really worth the time to make the swatches. Plus, new paints can be very precious, and you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna paint, you know, and and you'll get very um, nervous about using them. Well, I don't want to waste it. Making a swatch is a great way to kind of break those paints in so that they're not pristine, brand new, and intimidating anymore. So definitely do that and you know you can use um, any recycled tins that you have you could buy a palette you could buy half pans and put them in a palette I like I used to use um, magnets on the bottom of my pans for these metal palettes but actually I prefer poster putty because even sometimes the magnets will wiggle and the poster putty doesn't so that's just you can get that at the dollar store Target office supply stores any place like that and I just put a long uh, just stretch a piece out stick it down and press my pans into it and it works fa fabulous and it's way cheaper than a bunch of magnets too and you can ball it up and reuse it when you need to. So I think that pretty much covers the gamut. I'm very pleased with these paints. I like that. I feel like the tubes are better quality than the than the half pans, but it could just be the color assortment. And I like a cleaner, more vibrant palette, so I preferred the um, the tubes. It would be really interesting to compare. Maybe I maybe I'll do that. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in this. Maybe I will try the tube Paul Rubens colors this standard, the standard colors, and see how they compare to the pan Paul Rubens colors. Um, I really like the metallics. I was, it took me a while to warm up to this palette, to the, uh, to the standard Paul Rubens, but it did not take me long to warm up to these because they, they were all I look for in a watercolor. Um, I hope the price doesn't get jacked up on these because they're an amazing value right now. Um, currently when I'm recording this, they're $56. I know I'm not supposed to say that. But uh, Amazon told me I just couldn't type the prices. Didn't say I couldn't say them technically. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, if you go and look at these and they're $200, then, well, you might want to think twice. But, you know, if you get them in that, like, you know, under 60, under 70 range, I think they're a good deal. So that's that. You can find tutorials for these paintings in on my YouTube channel. That, that one's a time lapse. There is a real-time tutorial for this in my Critique Club uh, group over at Teachable. But um, yeah, if you want to see how these came together, check out my YouTube channel and um, have a look. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. As with anything, I mean, these are watercolors. These are, if you already have watercolors you like, then use the watercolors you have and like. If you're looking for something new, if you're looking for something with these qualities, definitely I recommend them. Uh, but it's always best to use what you have because the more you get adapted to what you have, the more possibility possibilities you'll see with them and you won't be constantly reinvent reinventing the wheel when you go to paint. Um, that said, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.